What's up, everybody? I'm Sue Arts with Halloween Daily News, and I am here with Sarah Butler at Scares at Care. So thanks for being here. Have you ever been to Williamsburg before? Never been to Williamsburg. It's my first time. So you probably haven't gotten out and about too much, have you? Not too much, unfortunately, but I did go to Shorty's Diner for breakfast this morning, and I give that two thumbs up. Nice. Shorty's <laughs> Diner. Shout out. Cool. So, so I guess uh, you, you have a lot of stuff you're working on, but now uh, you've kind of branched out a little bit, and you have your own film that you're trying to get made. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, it's a, an action thriller, female driven. I wrote it for myself to star in. Um, kind of the objective was to really give the fans if I spit in your grave something that they would love to see, but then elevate that to another level. So in this one, I'm not just avenging myself, but I'm avenging um, on the, on behalf of someone who is vulnerable. And, um, and, and so it just, it just kind of brings it to another level, I think. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, have you, do, did you write it out like an actual screenplay that you're ready to present? Absolutely. I have a full, pay, a, a full length screenplay. I have, you know, a, a PDF deck that, you know, that's how you send it out and pitch it to people. I've got a website with all that information on it. Um, I have a, you know, a preliminary budget. So, yeah, I got I got pretty deep in this thing. So yeah, far. that's awesome. How long did it take you to? Was it after I spit on your grave that you came up with the idea, or was it kind of just, or just yeah, before yeah. then, or? It was it was after. Um, and actually, the the initial idea was conceived um, while drinking Bloody Marys at a hotel pool with my buddy, and he was like, "What do you think would be a good sequel to I Spit on Your Grave?" And I was like, "Well." I think that this and this and this should happen. And we kind of made notes on our iPhones. Yeah. And that's how it started. And then it just developed over time, and we decided to move it away from the franchise so that we had the option to produce it yeah. whoever we wanted to yep. and have more control over it. Um, but yeah, that's really where it started, and that was definitely over five years ago. Wow. Um, so it's been a process. Yeah, yeah, but it's been like your baby, right? Totally. So. I mean, the first time you do anything, um, especially if you know you don't have any like formal education doing it, uh, I just think it's normal for it to take longer. You just you want to be thorough. You want to you know do a great job, or at least I always do. Right. Whenever I try something. Yeah. Um, and and so it just takes me longer to, to get things done. But that being said, you know that extra time adds so many layers of depth, and I've already thought about every potential angle of this script. I mean, I can talk about it in extreme detail. Yeah. <laughs> and if somebody gives me a note like, oh, you could change that. I can list out, but yeah, but that would impact da, 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 down the right. line. It's, yeah. it's, it's part of me now. <laughs> and I think that's awesome. And see, like what I find, because I'm also an artist, but formal training like only goes so far. Like mm -hmm. you kind of have to be in it. And now that you've been on sets and stuff all the time, you you know, you can kind of understand how things work. Yeah. Um, so, so you're looking to get your movie made. So you're definitely looking for some funding. Um, so, and you said you're going to star in it. Yeah. Um, so are you going to direct too, or how <laughs> do you have a director in mind already? I thought about directing it. Um, a lot of people were like, you should direct it because you have such a vision. And I do. Um, I've interviewed lots of people and I finally attached a director. Um, it's a female director. Her name is Melora Walters. She's an actress. She's um, worked for Paul Thomas Anderson uh, multiple times. She's it, she's very talented and experienced. In the last two to three years, she's been directing um, feature films, television, her own material that she's written. I've acted in a short film for her that went to Cannes. Um, so she's really, really talented. I can say that as someone who has worked with her. Right. Um, so I'm very excited about that, and people have reacted really well to her name, and just, you know, having a woman direct this particular story just makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I am looking for financing, though. Um, I've had financing, and then it went away, and, I, and then I've had people who are like, I would be the second person to finance it if the first money is there. You run into the same sorts of obstacles as right. you're going through this process. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's one that if I had some first money right up front, of course I would just be off yeah. and running. I have it all, everything else is put together. Um, but there's a few different ways to make that happen. So I'm ex exploring different routes at this moment. Yeah. yeah. Did it start out as a short film? Like, did you make like a, a shorter version and go around the film festivals at all? No. Um, I 
thought about doing that actually. I was going to do a, like a proof of concept, like you mm -hmm. said. Yeah. Um, and I was gonna. I, I picked one scene from the movie that I thought, okay, this will show really what we can do with this. Um, and the only reason I called that off is because my, I had a producer that said, I will give you the money for the whole film. And I was like, all right, cool. We don't need to do it. And then unfortunately, things happen. He had over leveraged himself. He had yep. to um, pull back the reins on a lot of different projects that he was doing. And unfortunately, mine was one of those. So, you know, I never did do a proof of concept, but something I would totally do. So if somebody wanted to help me out with um, with that, it's a much smaller budget. Awesome. And then we could just um, roll that right into the, the main film. And that would, that's a great idea. Yeah. I've seen a lot of projects awesome. go with that approach. Yep. So are you nervous um, if you do get funding, which I know you will, when you get funding, that they're, somebody, they're going to take your, your baby and kind of transform it and change it? Um, yeah, I've certainly been worried about that, and I've always um, kind of leaned towards the options that give me more of the control in the whole filmmaking process, because, right. you know, you worked on this so long, you want it to be what you want it to be. Um, but at this point, I have to tell you, I think I'd just be happy if it got made. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I've learned so much about it, about the whole process while doing this. And if I got the film made, at least then I would then learn about the actual production process, and the right. post-production process, in the distribution process. And all of those are valuable lessons. Oh, yeah. I don't intend that this will be my last project. <laughs> so if I, if, to be honest with you, if I can just get this one made, then I'd be happy and I can like go on to write even more amazing things. Right. There's tons of ideas in here. Yeah, it'll give you like the boost the confidence that you need and yeah absolutely I think like in the bottom uh, bottom line is we're filmmakers because it's fun to do we like it it's the way we want to spend our time so I want to do it you yeah know? and I'm not gonna stop doing it after this film it's not like this is my big holy grail of movies but it is a really it could cool be movie. Though. you never know usually when usually when you don't know if it will be or you don't right. think it will be that's when it is yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you just never know and usually it's when you're least expecting it for sure yeah absolutely what can you say about Scares of Care? Um, I know this is our first time here. Uh, what do you think of the charity and, and just this convention in general? I mean, I love conventions, but this one has a whole other level of depth and, and, and a warm, fuzzy feeling because we're, we're doing this for a great cause. Um, we have a couple of recipients this year, Christine and David, I believe. Yep. And um, I'm very happy to be helping contribute to their families and their time of need. I think that's one of the most amazing things that we can do, um, that anyone can do, but I've been given this opportunity, I'm super grateful. Um, so yeah, Scares for Cares is just kind of like a big old warm fuzzy family and I'm so glad to be part of it now. It's yeah, great. I think we're definitely going to be coming back for sure and awesome. so thankful that people like you have made the trip here and, and for you, you know, good karma, you know. Totally. Um, also, there's candy. Oh, there's candy, yes. Yeah, so, so did you celebrate Halloween as a kid growing up? Yeah, I, of course. It was the best. Yeah, so you went out and like, can you remember any costumes that were your favorite? Or? Yeah, so I grew up in Washington State and Halloween was very cold. Um, so one of yes. my favorite costumes was when I was a caterpillar because I got a green sleeping bag and I just cut out armholes and then I had sewed on all these little legs on the side and I was like toasty and warm. Yeah. And I, I could stay out much later and get much more candy. So it, it really worked out. Yeah, that's awesome. And speaking of candy, do you have a favorite? Oh my gosh. Favorite candy? I love so much candy. Um, if it's chocolate, it'd be Milky Way, which I think, yeah, I do. I have one right here. And I hoarded from the children yesterday. Nice. Um, and then I, I have nerd. I love nerds. Nerds love, are good. I love any sour gummies. Um, oh, sour gummies are the best. Um, so like Sour Patch Kids, the watermelon ones that they have, the, the trolley bright crawlers, um, Swedish fish, which isn't so sour, but it's still good. Um, you know, just to name a few. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. We like to tell, you know, because your fans will, they'll find that to be interesting. And, and next con you go, you're going to have, might get some candy. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for talking with me. And we wish you a lot of luck with your film. And Thank you. we're going to be cheering for you and uh, following your career. And in the future, keep us in mind, you know, because you have a strong fan base. And we're glad to, horror fans are the best, right? They They're very the loyal and diehard. Heart, so. so loyal, so warm and cuddly, like yep. so full of hugs and joy. Yep. Ironically, yeah, for <laughs> I love sure. them. I love them. <laughs>
All right. Thanks again for talking with us. Thank you.